Good morning everybody. Today I'm going to tie a 1 32nd marabou tail crappy jig. Stay tuned. Before we start I just want to remind everybody to hit that subscribe button. We're getting awfully close to that 500 subscriber mark which isn't a big deal in the grand scheme of things but to me I'm, I'm completely thrilled. The winners of a random drawing will be contacted and there'll be a set of jigs specifically for the type of fishing you do. Uh, I got some paint curing, so I got about an hour, 45 minutes or so. I thought I'd sit down and uh, tie a marabou tail jig. Uh, like I mentioned a video or two ago, I'm filling my personal tackle box um, as we've we're starting to get into that springtime weather, warmer weather. This weekend's supposed to be um, actually beautiful, very warm and clear. Uh, so I j I'm just itching to get out, you know, maybe take the kayak out, do some sort of fishing. After I make my runs uh, to the bait shops uh, with all the walleye jigs. But let's switch our screens. And in the vise, I have a 1 32nd ball head. This has a must add hook, uh, 32760. It's a size 6 hook. 1 32nd, very tiny. And just as a comparison, this is a 1 half Barumba, and I can make that little jig disappear. So that's what. This is what a lot of my videos will show. <laughs> so you can see how far we're actually zoomed in to see this little thing. All right. So to begin, I'm going to start with a base of size two aught. And this is just regular Danville nylon thread. Size 2 aught. And with touching wraps, I walk the thread down to the point of the hook. Now I'm using Marabou Tip since this is a smaller jig. So this feather, just the tip. I want, a, I want a tail that is the length of the body and extends the length of the body past the bend of the hook. And if this is a little bushy, you can take and pull down some of these fibers out of the way. So you get the size of the tail that you're comfortable with. Now on another note, you can also use these longer fibers and just take that pinch like that and tie it in. It's a little bit more uh, unkept. You know, you have different length tips in that, uh, in that instance. But I don't usually throw away, if I'm doing a lot of these small head jigs, I don't usually toss them out. But pass the pen with the hook, the length of the body. That's what we're looking for. So I cut that with a little bit of the stem extended, just so I can lay that down. and lock that in place. I can walk the thread back up to the head. And then I'm gonna walk it all the way back down to the point of the hook. This step, you can take just a touch of head cement. Your Sally Hansen's 
just to add a little bit of durability to the inside of that jig. And what I'm using today for the body is the um, ice chenille. Uh, this is the ICM 54. It's just a chenille, uh, a chartreuse, medium size. So that's what we're using today. And I don't, with this ice chenille, I don't typically strip uh, from the center thread of the sh of the chenille before I tie it in. Uh, I find that the tying thread going on each side of those uh, fibers gives it something to hold on to. So just lay this on the side to lock it in. Walking the thread just a couple wraps back towards the bend of the hook and then you can walk it with touching wraps up to the head of the jig. I'm going to put in just one layer of uh, chenille. Uh, I'm not looking to overlap and build it up at all. I do want some of this red center to show through and as we wrap this you might see that that darker that darker inside. Um, this would be a good technique to use if you're doing something like a caterpillar or a grub. Um, when you look at them and they got that white rubber band color looking body, but then you can kind of see their guts. Um, so, so that's what this kind of is. So to begin wrapping, I'm going to make one wrap towards the bend of the hook and then angle my chenille with touching wraps up towards the head. I don't want to overlap this at all. I want the wraps to be touching because I don't want to compress any of these fibers, which it appears exactly what happened. Let's try this again. Just trying to give the thread a little bit of a twist. It's starting to lay down a little bit flat in that one section, which seemed... I don't know why I'm struggling with this, but we'll fix it. Touching wraps. There we go. Up to the head. All those wraps have been in between the bobbin and the jaws of the vise. This last wrap, I'm going to bring the chenille to the outside of my bobbin. So when I switch hands, I can pick my bobbin up and just begin wrapping, locking this in place. So I don't feel the need to crisscross my chenille and my thread and wrap it and crisscross it and wrap it. Um, Picking it up in this order uh, locks it on perfectly. At this point, you could add uh, a hackle collar, uh, which I often do. I'm going to leave this one plain um, just because I like I like this uh, profile. When this gets wet, you'll definitely see that red interior. Uh, another good flash I've been using a lot and adding to the tails is um, it, it's new to me I'm sure this has been around quite some time I just picked this up one day by accident and and really like it I've been putting it on, on a lot of the walleye jigs I'm selling this year so but it's the new age crinkle flash and this is the cherry pearl which you know come on that would look amazing a couple strands of those along with the tail but on these real tiny ones, the 132nd, um, or even smaller, I do a 190 head. Uh, for some of the fishing I do around here, that um, uh, it would be perfect. Now I am going to use a whip finish tool for this, if I 
have one available. And perhaps one day we'll go through this jelly jar. I've had this jelly jar on my desk. for decades and it's the tools it's all the tools I rely on that I that I use and reuse um, if it's something that I used only once or twice and haven't touched in quite some time it comes out of this jar this everything in here gets used all the time uh, in jig tying so I might go through that jar. I have, a, I have two separate things on my fly table. Same idea. It's the tools that I use constantly. Um, maybe not for every thing that I tie. Maybe not every jig that I tie. But um, I have to touch them at least monthly. Um, and it stays in that jar. So, But here we go. Just to whip finish this real quick. One, two, three. Perfect. And when this gets wet, this fly, the uh, marabou, will come to a point, undulate, move in the water. Real pretty jig. Um, I like this just plain profile, nothing fancy. And like with all the jigs, to finish this off, I'm just going to use a lacquer based head cement. There you have it. So if you enjoyed what we did here today, go ahead, add some comments down below. Like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Keep tying, and until next time, guys, tight lines.